Blue Oyster Cult is an American rock band formed in Stony Brook, New York, in 1967, best known for the singles The Reaper, Burnin' For You, and Godzilla. They have sold 25 million records worldwide, including 7 million in the United States alone. The band's music videos, especially Burnin' For You, received heavy rotation on MTV when the music television network premiered in 1981, cementing the band's contribution to the development and success of the music video in modern popular culture. Blue Oyster Cult's longest-lasting and most commercially successful lineup included Donald Buck Dharma Roser, Eric Bloom, who lead vocals. Stun Guitar, Alan Lanier, Joe Bouchard, and Albert Bouchard. The band's current lineup still includes Bloom and Roser, in addition to Danny Miranda, Richie Castellano, and Jules Radino. The duo of the band's manager Sandy Perlman and rock critic Richard Meltzer, who also met at Stony Brook University, played a key role in writing many of the band's lyrics. Blue Oyster Cult was formed in 1967 as Soft White Underbelly in a communal house at Stony Brook University on Long Island when rock critic Sandy Perlman overheard a jam session consisting of fellow Stony Brook classmate Donald Roser and his friends. Perlman offered to become the band's manager and creative partner, which the band agreed to. The band's original lineup consisted of guitarist Roser, drummer Albert Bouchard, keyboardist Alan Lanier, singers Jeff Cagle and Leigh Brownstein and bassist Andrew Winters. In October 1967, the band made their debut performance as Steve Noonan's backing band at the Stony Brook University Gymnasium, a gig booked by Perlman. The band's name came from Winston Churchill's description of Italy as the soft underbelly of the Axis. Perlman was important to the band, he was able to get them gigs and recording contracts with Elektra and Columbia. And he provided them with his poetry for use as lyrics for many of their songs, including astronomy. Writer Richard Meltzer, also a Stony Brook University student, provided the band with lyrics from their early days up through their most recent studio album. In 1968, the band moved in together at their first house in the Thomaston area of Great Neck, New York. The band recorded an album's worth of material for Electra Records in 1968. Brownstein played his final show as Soft White Underbelly's lead singer in the summer of 1969, opening for the band at Stony Brook University. His departure led Electra to shelve the album recorded with him on vocals. Eric Bloom was hired by the band as their acoustic engineer and eventually became lead singer, replacing Brownstein, through a series of three unlikely coincidences. One of which was Lanier decided to join Bloom on a drive to an upstate gig, where he spent the night with Bloom's old college bandmates and got to hear old tapes of Bloom's talent as lead vocalist. Because of this, Bloom was offered the job of lead singer for Soft White Underbelly. However, a bad review of a 1969 Fillmore East show caused Perlman to change the name of the band, first to Oaxaca, then to the Stock Forest Group. Perlman also gave stage names to each of the band members but only Buck Dharma kept his. The band recorded yet another album's worth of material for Electra, but only one single was released, and only in a promo edition. Of 300 copies, on Electra Records. The album featured Bloom as their main lead singer, but Roser also sang lead on a few songs, a pattern of sharing lead vocals that have continued throughout the band's career. Under Bloom, Soft White Underbelly and Stock Forest Group became Stony Brook University house bands which were popular on campus. After a few more temporary band names, including the Santo Sisters, the band settled on Blue Oyster Cult in 1971. New York City producer-slash-composer and jingle writer David Lucas saw the band perform and took them into his warehouse recording studio and produced four demos, with which Perlman was able to get the renamed band another audition with Columbia Records. Clive Davis liked what he heard, and signed the band to the label. The first album was subsequently produced and recorded by Lucas on 8-track at Lucas Studio. Winters would leave the band and be replaced by Bouchard's brother, Joe Bouchard. Blue Oyster Cult, Billboard, 1974 Their debut album Blue Oyster Cult was released in January 1972, with a black-and-white cover designed by artist Bill Golick. The album featured the song Cities on Flame with Rock and Roll, Stairway to the Stars, and then came the last days of May. By this time, the band's sound had become more oriented toward hard rock, but songs like She's As Beautiful As A Foot and Redeemed also showed a strong element of the band's psychedelic roots. Perlman wanted the group to be the American answer to Black Sabbath. All of the band members except for Alan Lanier sang lead, a pattern that would continue on many subsequent albums, although lead singer Eric Bloom sang the majority of the songs. The album sold well, and Blue Oyster Cult toured with artists such as The Birds, Mahavishnu Orchestra, and Alice Cooper. 
During the touring process, the band's sound became heavier and more direct. Their next album Tyranny and Mutation, released in 1973, was written while the band was on tour for their first LP. It contained songs such as the Red and the Black, an ode to the Royal Canadian Mounted Police and a rewrite of I'm on the Lamb but I Ain't No Sheep from their debut album. And also a reference to the novel of the same name by Stendhal, Hot Rails to Hell and Baby Ice Dog, the first of the band's many collaborations with Patti Smith. It featured a harder rocking approach than before, though the band's songs were also growing more complex. The album outsold its predecessor, a trend that would continue with their next few albums. The band's third album, Secret Treaties received positive reviews, featuring songs such as Career of Evil, Dominance and Submission and Astronomy. As a result of constant touring, the band was now capable of being headliners. The album continued their upward sales trend, and would eventually go gold. As the three albums during this formative period all had black and white covers, the period of their career has been dubbed the black and white years by fans and critics. The band's first live album On Your Feet or On Your Knees achieved greater success and went gold. Its success gave the band more time to work on a follow-up. The band members were able to purchase home recording equipment to record demos for their next album. Their next studio album, Agents of Fortune, was their first to go platinum and was again produced by David Lucas. It contained the hit single The Reaper, which reached number 12 on the Billboard charts and has become a classic of the hard rock genre. Other major songs on the album were The Summer of Love, E.T.I. and The Revenge of Vera Gemini. Having recorded demos of the songs at home before recording the album, the band's songwriting process had become more individual. With none of the songs featuring the collaborative writing between the band members that had been common on their earlier albums. Although the albums still feature their trademark hard rock with sinister lyrics, the songs had become more conventional in structure, and the production was more polished. For the first and only time, the album featured lead vocals from all five band members, with Alan Lanier singing lead on the song True Confessions. With Albert Bouchard singing lead on three songs and Joe Bouchard and Donald Roser singing lead on one each, Eric Bloom ended up taking the lead on only four of the album's ten songs. For the tour, the band added lasers to their light show, for which they became known. They were among the first acts to use lasers in performance. Their next album, Spectres, had the FM radio hit Godzilla, and would become the one of the band's better-selling albums, with other well-known songs like I Love the Night and Going Through the Motions. However, its sales were not as strong as those for the previous album, Going Gold But Not Platinum, becoming their first album to sell less than its predecessor. It featured even more polished production, and continued the trend of the lead vocals extensively shared between members, although Alan Lanier did not sing lead. As with the previous album, Eric Bloom sang lead on fewer than half the songs. The band then released another live album, Some Enchanted Evening. Though it was intended as another double live album in the vein of On Your Feet or On Your Knees, Columbia insisted that it be edited down to single album length. It was a resounding commercial success, becoming Blue Oyster Cult's most popular album and eventually selling over 2 million copies. It also revealed that while the band's studio work was becoming increasingly well-produced, they were still very much a hard rock band on stage. 1977 publicity photo with a 1971-81 lineup, LR, Donald Buck Dharma Roser, Eric Bloom, Albert Bouchard, Alan Lanier, Joe Bouchard it was followed by the studio album Mirrors. For Mirrors, instead of working with previous producers Sandy Perlman and Murray Krugman, Blue Oyster Cult chose Tom Werman, who had worked with acts such as Cheap Trick and Ted Nugent. It featured the band's glossiest production to date. It also gave Roser, the lead vocalist on the band's biggest hits, bigger prominence as a vocalist, singing lead on four of the nine songs. However, the resulting album sales were disappointing. Perlman's association with Black Sabbath led to Sabbath's Heaven and Hell producer Martin Birch being hired for the next Blue Oyster Cult record. The album found the band returning to their hard rock roots, and although both of the Bouchard brothers and guitarist Roser all got lead vocal turns, Bloom would sing the majority of the tracks. The result was positive, with Cultosaurus Erectus receiving good reviews. The album went to number 12 in the United Kingdom, but did not do as well in the United States. The song Black Blade, which was written by Bloom with lyrics by science fiction and fantasy author Michael Moorcock, is a kind of retelling of Moorcock's epic Elric of Melny Bone saga. The band also did a co-headlining tour with Black Sabbath in support of the album, calling the tour Black and Blue. Birch produced the band's next album as well, Fire of Unknown Origin, which peaked at number 24 on the Billboard 200, 
becoming the band's highest charting album. The biggest hit on this album was the top 40 hit Burnin' For You, a song Roser had written with a Richard Meltzer lyric. He had intended to use it on his solo album, Flat Out, but he was convinced to use it on the Blue Oyster Cult album instead. The revival of the band's heavier sound continued, albeit with fairly heavy use of synthesizers and some noticeable new wave influence on a few tracks. It contained other fan favorites such as Joan Crawford and Veteran of the Psychic Wars, another song co-written by Moorcock. Several of the songs had been written for the animated film Heavy Metal, but only Veteran of the Psychic Wars was actually used in the movie. The album marked a strong commercial resurgence for the band and achieved gold status, their first studio album since Spectres to do so. During the tour for Fire of Unknown Origin, Albert Bouchard had a falling out with the others and left the band, and Rick Downey replaced him on drums. This marked the end of the band's original and best-known lineup. After leaving the band, Albert Bouchard spent five years working on a solo album based on Sandy Perlman's poem Imagine Us. Blue Oyster Cult also released a third live album Extraterrestrial Live. The band then went to the studio for the next album, The Revolution by Night, with Bruce Fairbairn as producer. After two albums of a return to a harder rocking sound, the band adopted a more radio-friendly, AOR-oriented sound with Fairbairn providing a 1980s-style production. This approach met with some success, especially on its highest-charting single, Roser Shooting Shark, co-written by Patti Smith and featuring Randy Jackson on bass, which reached number 83 on the charts. Bloom's Take Me Away, achieving some FM radio play. However, the album didn't match sales of its predecessor, failed to achieve gold status and marked the beginning of the band's second commercial decline. After touring for Revolution, Rick Downey left, leaving Blue Oyster Cult without a drummer. Bach reunited with Albert Bouchard for a California tour in February 1985, infamously known as the Albert Returns Tour. This arrangement was only temporary and caused more tensions between the band and Bouchard, since he had thought he would be staying on permanently, which wasn't the case. The band had only intended to use him as a last-minute fill-in until another drummer could come on board, which resulted in Bouchard's leaving after the tour. Alan Lanier also quit the band shortly thereafter, leaving them without a keyboardist and with only three remaining original members. This incarnation of the band would sometimes be referred to as three oc by fans, a pun on the number of original members left. Blue Oyster Cult hired drummer Jimmy Wilcox and keyboardist Tommy Svancek to finish the album Club Ninja, which was poorly received, with only Dancing in the Ruins one of several songs on the record written. Entirely by outside songwriters, enjoying minimal success on radio and MTV. The best-known original on the album is Perfect Water written by Dharma and Jim Carroll. While the band members have generally been disparaging about the album in retrospect, Joe Bouchard has stated that Perfect Water is perfect genius. The band toured in Germany, after which bassist Bouchard left, leaving only two members of the classic lineup, Eric Bloom and Donald Roser. Some people referred to the band as Two Oyster Cult during this period. John Rogers was hired to replace Joe and this version of the band finished out the 1986 tour. After it wound up that year, the band took a temporary break from recording and touring. When Blue Oyster Cult received an offer to tour in Greece in the early summer of 1987, the band reformed. Wilcox quit while Svancek was fired for making excessive financial demands, Alan Lanier then was offered to rejoin and agreed so the new lineup now featured three founding members. Along with John Rogers returning on bass and Ron Riddle as their newest drummer. Columbia Records was not interested in releasing the Imaginos project as an Albert Bouchard solo album so it was arranged for the record to be released in 1988 by Columbia as a Blue Oyster Cult album. With some new lead vocal overdubs from Bloom and Roser and lead guitar overdubs from Roser. These replaced most of Albert Bouchard's lead vocals, as well as many lead guitar parts that had been recorded by session musicians. Joe Bouchard and Alan Lanier had earlier contributed some minor keyboard and backing vocal parts to the album, allowing all five original members to be credited. The album didn't sell well and though the then-current Blue Oyster Cult lineup toured to promote Imaginos, promotion by the label was virtually non-existent. When Columbia Records' parent company CBS Records was purchased by Sony and became Sony Music Entertainment, Blue Oyster Cult were dropped from the label. Blue Oyster Cult live in 2006 The band spent the next 11 years touring without releasing an album of new material, though they did contribute two new songs to the Bad Channel's movie soundtrack. Released in 1992, and also released an album of re-recorded songs from the band's original lineup called Cult Classic in 1994. During these years, while the three original members remained constant, 
there were several changes in the band's rhythm section. Ron Riddle quit in 1991 and was followed by a series of other drummers including Chuck Borgi, John Michelli, John O'Reilly and Bobby Rondinelli. As for the bass position, Rogers left in 1995, and was replaced by Danny Miranda. In the late 1990s, Blue Oyster Cult secured a recording contract with CMC Records, and continued to tour frequently. Two studio albums were released, Heaven Forbid and Curse of the Hidden Mirror. Both albums featured songs co-written by cyberpunk-slash-horror novelist John Shirley. The first mostly featured Miranda on bass and Borgi on drums, though a few tracks feature earliest bassist John Rogers and one track features Rondinelli on drums, who had joined the band near the end of the recording. Curse of the Hidden Mirror features Miranda and Rondinelli as the rhythm section, and the pair contributed to the songwriting as well. Neither album sold well. Another live record and DVD A Long Day's Night followed in 2002, both drawn from one concert in Chicago. This album also featured the Bloom, Roser, Lanier, Miranda, Rondinelli lineup. Although the band's lineup had remained stable from 1997 to 2004, they began to experience personnel changes again in 2004. Rondinelli left in 2004, and was replaced by Jules Radino. Miranda left during the same year to become the bassist for Queen plus Paul Rogers in place of the retired John Deacon. He was replaced by Richie Castellano, who would also take occasional turns as a lead vocalist on stage. In 2001, Sony slash Columbia's reissue arm, Legacy Records issued expanded versions of the first four Blue Oyster Cult studio albums, including some previously unreleased demos and outtakes from album sessions. Live Recordings, and Post Street. Cecilia Tunes from the Stock Forest Group Era. Blue Oyster Cult performing at the Sweden Rock Festival, 2008 Alan Lanier retired from live performances in 2007 after not appearing with the band since late 2006. Castellano switched to rhythm guitar and keyboards, Castellano also filled in on lead guitar and vocals for an ailing Buck Dharma in two shows. In 2005, and the position of bassist was taken up by Rudy Sarzo. With the band employing Danny Miranda and John Rogers as guest bassists to fill in when Sarzo was unavailable. Sarzo then joined as an official member of the band, although Rogers continued to occasionally fill in when Sarzo was busy. In February 2007, the Sony Legacy Remaster series continued, releasing expanded versions of studio album Spectres and live album Some Enchanted Evening. In June 2012, the band announced that bassist Rudy Sarzo was leaving the band and was being replaced by former Utopia bassist Kasim Sultan. In August of the same year, it was announced that Sony Legacy would be releasing a 17-disc box set entitled The Complete Columbia Albums Collection on October 30, 2012. The set includes the first round of the remastered series plus the long-awaited remastered versions of On Your Feet or On Your Knees. Mirrors, Cultusaurus Erectus, Fire of Unknown Origin, Extraterrestrial Live, The Revolution by Night, Club Ninja, and Imagine Us. Also exclusive to this set are two discs of rare and unreleased B-sides, demos and radio broadcasts. Also in 2012, celebrating the 40th anniversary of Blue Oyster Cult, the then-current incarnation of the band reunited for the first. Time in 25 years with other original members Joe and Albert Bouchard and Alan Lanier as guests for a special event in New York. Founding keyboardist slash guitarist Alan Lanier died of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease on August 14, 2013. In 2016, Albert Bouchard played again as guest with the current lineup of the band, playing at shows in New York, Los Angeles, Dublin, and London, where Bach played the album Agents of Fortune in its entirety. This show's featured songs from Agents of Fortune that had either not been played live before, songs that had not been played since the album's debut tour, Morning. Final, and songs that were either no longer or never were played frequently, as well as the fan-favorite Five Guitars, which had not been played since Albert initially left the band in 1981. Albert played in the following songs of the show, The Revenge of Vera Gemini, Sinful Love, Tattoo Vampire, Morning Final, Tenderloin, Debbie. Denise, Cities on Flame with Rock and Roll, and Five Guitars. In a May 2017 appearance on Castellano's band Geek Podcast, Bloom confirmed that there were tentative plans to release a new album in 2018 and that the band was currently considering offers from multiple record labels. He also stated that former bassist Danny Miranda would be playing with the band for the remainder of the year due to Sultan's prior touring commitments with Todd Rundgren. During the same year, the band's official website started to list Miranda as an official member, stating that Miranda had returned to Bach in early 2017. 
Blue Oyster Cult performs in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, 2012 Buck Dharma stated in February 2019 that the band would be recording a new album to be released by fall. On July 10, 2019, it was announced that the band had signed to Frontiers Music, and would in fact be releasing the new album in 2020. It's been a long time since Bach's last studio album. Recording with Danny, Richie and Jules should be a great experience as we've been touring together for years. And Buck and I look forward to including them in the creative and recording process, said Bloom. The current band is great and has never been recorded other than Live, so we feel now's the time for new songs to be written and recorded. About half of the songs for the new record exist and the rest will be finished during the process. Added Buck Dharma. In February 2020, Richie Castellano posted a short video to Facebook featuring himself and Eric Bloom, stating that the band are working on the new Blue Oyster Cult record remotely by using Connection Open Online Audio Collaboration Tool. In August 2020, the band announced on their website that their 15th studio album The Symbol Remains would be released on October 9, 2020. The span of 19 years between Curse of the Hidden Mirror and The Symbol Remains marks the longest gap between studio albums in Blue Oyster Cult's career. The album was released to great critical reception, with tracks such as Box In My Head and Nightmare Epiphany often praised as a return to form after the band had seemingly turned away from rock and towards pop. Blue Oyster Cult is a hard rock band, whose music has been described as heavy metal, psychedelic rock, occult rock, biker boogie, acid rock, and progressive rock. They have also been recognized for helping pioneer genres such as stoner metal and speed metal. The band has also experimented with additional genres on specific albums. An example of this is Mirrors. The band is influenced by artists such as Alice Cooper, Grateful Dead, The Doors, Jefferson Airplane, MC5, The Blues Project, Jimi Hendrix, and Black Sabbath. While Blue Oyster Cult has been noted for heavy rock, they would often add their own tongue-in-cheek style. Keeping with their image, the band would often include out-of-context fragments of Perlman's The Soft Doctrines of Imaginos into their lyrics, giving their songs cryptic meanings. Additionally, the band would keep a folder of Meltzer's and Perlman's word associations to insert into their music. The hook and cross logo one variant of the lead symbol in alchemy, also used to represent the planet Saturn in astrology the name Blue Oyster Cult came from a 1960s poem written by manager Sandy Perlman. It was part of his Imaginos poetry, later used more extensively on their album Imagine Us. Perlman had also come up with the band's earlier name, Soft White Underbelly, from a phrase used by Winston Churchill in describing Italy during World War II. In Perlman's poetry, the Blue Oyster Cult was a group of aliens who had assembled secretly to guide Earth's history. Initially, the band was not happy with the name, but settled for it, and went to work preparing to record their first release. In a 1976 interview published in the UK music magazine Zigzag, Perlman told the story explaining the origin of the band's name was an anagram of Cully Stout Beer. The addition of an omelette was suggested by Alan Lanier, but rock critic Richard Meltzer claims to have suggested it just after Perlman came up with the name, reportedly because of the Wagnerian aspect of metal. Other bands later copied the practice of using umlauts or diacritic marks in their own band names, such as Motorhead, Motley Crue, Queen's Reich and parodied by SPN Altap. The hook and cross logo was designed by Bill Golick in January 1972, and appears on all of the band's albums. In Greek mythology, the hook and cross symbol is that of Kronos, the king of the Titans and father of Zeus, and is the alchemical symbol for lead, one of the heaviest of metals. Sandy Perlman considered this, combined with the heavy and distorted guitar sound of the band and decided the description heavy metal would be apt for the band's sound. The hook and cross symbol also resembled the astrological symbol for Saturn, the Roman god of agriculture, and the sickle, which is associated with both Kronos and Saturn. The logos, metaphysical, alchemical and mythological connotations, combined with its similarity to some religious symbols gave it a flair of decadence. And mystery, the band was billed, for the only time, as the blue oyster cult on the cover and label of their second album, Tyranny and Mutation. Blue Oyster Cult have been influential to the realm of hard rock and heavy metal, leading them to being referred to as the Thinking Man's Heavy Metal Band due to their often cryptic lyrics, literate songwriting, and links to famous authors. They have influenced many acts including Iron Maiden, Metallica, Fate's Warning, Iced Earth, Kiri Thungle, Alice in Chains, Twisted Sister, Rat, Steel Panther, Green River, Body Count, Possessed, Candlemass, St. Vitus. Trouble, Opeth, White Zombie, Failer Talk, 
Him, Turbo Negro, Radio Birdman, The Cult, The Minutemen, Firehose, Hoodoo Gurus, Widespread Panic, Queens of the Stone Age, Humphreys McGee, Stabbing Westward, Royal Trucks, and Mo. The band's influence has extended beyond the musical sphere. The lyrics of astronomy have been named by author Sean Street. Gene is inspirational to the later chapters of his fantasy novel Clotho's Loom, wherein Sandy Perlman's Four Winds Bar provides the setting for a portion of the action. Titles and lines from the band's songs provided structure and narrative for the third Robert Galbraith novel, Career of Evil. Their hit single The Reaper was featured in the famous Saturday Night Live sketch More Cowbell. The original recording was produced at the record plant in New York by David Lucas, who sang background vocals with Roser, and introduced the now-famous cowbell part, which may have been played by himself, Albert Bouchard, or Eric Bloom. The Reaper was also used in writer-slash-director John Carpenter's horror film classic, Halloween, the opening sequence of the miniseries adaptation of The Stand by Stephen King. And covered by the Mutton Birds for Peter Jackson's horror comedy film The Frighteners. The Reaper was also used throughout the comedy film The Stone Age and plays a role in its storyline. In the film Gone Girl, the song plays on the radio during a car driving scene with actor Ben Affleck. The song was also used as the opening theme and main story element in the 1996 FMV computer game Ripper, by Take-Two Interactive, and was also featured in the 2021 video game Returnal. Despite the band's influence and longevity, they have yet to be nominated for induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Current members during their career, Blue Oyster Cult have frequently collaborated with outside lyricists, though in the late 70s, the band members also wrote lyrics for some of their songs. Lyricists for Blue Oyster Cult have included all the original members, producer Sandy Perlman, and writers Richard Meltzer, Patti Smith, Michael Moorcock, Eric Van Lustbader, Jim Carroll, Broadway Blotto, and John Shirley. Thanks for watching.